Welcome to the channel about news from around the world. While you subscribe and like it, we're going to start. The United States, through Blinken's visit, sought to signal to the world that the channels of dialogue are open. In other words, the United States wants to tell China that the two countries can coexist peacefully together if the latter abandons its policy of expanding its spheres of influence and, by making concessions in competition with Washington, accepts the role of little brother. Stopping China's growing economy with sanctions and threats seems difficult. After all, the U.S. is going through a period when the barbaric imperialist policy pursued for years is in fact met with rejection by many countries and a significant portion of these states prefer to distance themselves from Washington and cooperate with Beijing whenever possible. The aggressivist foreign policy has begun to produce results in favor of China in Asia, Africa, the Middle East and Latin America. The relations established and agreements signed between many countries and China in recent months are an expression of this. Which way Europe, and more specifically Germany, France, Italy and the UK, turns in the strategic cooperation alliances that have formed or are beginning to form around the US and China is important in terms of the economic and military balance of power. A similar basis of balance has been discussed in terms of US-Russian relations. The USA has succeeded in erecting a thick wall between Europe and Russia. At the present stage of the imperialist confrontation, a renewed rapprochement between Europe and Russia is a very distant prospect. Depending on the development of the contradictions, the US plans to create a similar wall between the Germany-France axis and China, hoping to keep the U on its side against the PRC. China, on the other hand, is building long-term plans with countries that are strategic allies of the United States, apart from the United Kingdom, to prevent them from acting in concert with Washington. Above all, it is Germany. In the statements that came out of the joint meeting of the German and Chinese governments on Tuesday 20 June, in Berlin, attended by a large number of ministers, the main emphasis was placed on cooperation. China, which has been openly declared an adversary and taken up in the US national security strategy, is defined in a similar document by Germany as a partner and a systemic rival. It should be noted that previously Germany only held joint ministerial meetings with Israel and France, to which it attached particular importance. Under Angela Merkel, a joint government meeting began to be held every two years also with China, which is of strategic importance in terms of Germany's foreign trade. Despite the ministerial meeting, how long the strategic partnership between Germany and China will last and how deep it will be is unclear. The fact is that German Chancellor Olaf Scholz is under pressure both in Germany and in the EU in this regard. Various factions of the German capital, especially the Greens and the Free Democratic Party of Germany, FDP, which index their future in relation to the USA, are pushing for a move away from China. On the other hand, various factions of the Social Democratic line oppose this, noting that such an approach would do great harm to the national economy. A similar clash of lines has taken place in policy towards Russia, with pro-American forces ultimately winning out. In the European Economic Security Strategy, released by the European Commission during the hours when the joint meeting of the German and Chinese governments was in progress, the PRC was not just mentioned, but was listed as a target. By all appearances, the contradictions between China and NATO will deepen in the process of imperialist redistribution, and this will gradually develop into sanctions in various areas. In Germany, there is already talk of banning 5 grams technology and Huawei phones for security reasons, to avoid espionage. Also on the agenda is the issue of preventing Chinese companies from investing in strategically important areas. Meanwhile, European capital is going to pursue a strategy of taking unlimited advantage of the Chinese market on the one hand and mitigating risks on the other, working on various plans to minimize the impact of possible sanctions. Above all, the unbundling of monopolies operating in China is being considered. Western monopolies that do not want to leave the Chinese market will transform their subsidiaries in China into a completely separate company in the coming period. Already, it has begun to be written that the German monopolies Volkswagen and BASF will resort to this method in order not to leave the market. There are also US monopolies that are getting ahead of the curve and splitting up. The policy pursued by the US to maintain its dominance in the world shows that the Chinese dance of Germany will not last long. Despite the huge amount of trade between the two countries, 300 billion euros, Germany joining the anti-Chinese chorus at the same time will mean that the US is still very powerful. Thank you for watching. If you're interested, subscribe and leave a comment.